Gonna grind that down a little bit, weld the inside of it, and then weld around the outside of this. All right, so that turned out pretty nice. You can tell that as I was welding it, the heat kind of warped this plate. So as I was milling, it was a little bit bowed right there. It's uh, kind of indiscernible, but until you mill it, that's whenever it becomes apparent. But yeah, this goes like so. And then the pump shaft coupler right there, or the Yamaha mid shaft. So. I'll spin there and I'll probably put a couple little tacks here to keep this located or I might just seal it I don't know I'll see what other people well, do and do exactly that and I just sent this picture to Jamie uh, only to realize that he's suggested welding the inside of this as well so I'm gonna weld this as well and then mill it down to where it's smooth and pretty and then sick flex the mid shaft adapter plate onto this so here is that so that is what it's supposed to look like for the Yamaha setup. Weld around the ring. So now that that's welded, I'm gonna machine this off to where it's nice and smooth. So this rubber lip right here on the mid shaft, PTO adapter doesn't interfere with this weld. Yep, that turned out nice. Just re-welded the inside of it and then took the mill to it and ground it down. So now no water can come in and leak through this PTO mid shaft bearing. Once my new shaft arrives, I'm going to install this uh, and get everything located and get the motor installed. Okay, so the pump shaft is back from being shortened 5.25 inches. Um, I actually found a guy on the Minijet Facebook page that uh, shortens these, Jeremy Williams, and uh, his price was a whole lot more affordable than buying the dividing head, buying the involute cutters, and all that to turn it down on the lathe and... Uh, basically respline it. So I went with him and uh, here's a little bit of video explaining the process of what he did to get this shortened five and a quarter inches. So we're fixing to shave the drive shaft down to the diameter where the splines were originally. So we moved back, we take five and a quarter of an inch off the mini jet intake. So we've already measured for that distance, for the new spline. So we're gonna spin it down to the proper diameter. We get it. Okay, I've just assembled the wearing housing back onto the pump. Here is where the pump actually is. And then this is the reduction nozzle where it where the compression happens and it, it vectors the 
the water with this. So this is a trim, trim and steering nozzle. So, uh, all right, I'm gonna get this installed back in the boat, get it bolted up, and then locate the motor where it needs to be so I can uh, build some motor mounts. Okay, the mid shaft is in. So I won't be using the uh, neoprene washers, but that's just what I had for the time being. Because all of this has to get Sika marined uh, epoxy sealed before it goes together so that it's uh, watertight with this stuff. So nothing will get through this, that's for sure. So, um, all right, now that that's located, I now have to get the new motor mounts on this engine and start building the motor mount setup to get it located to the, um, the mid shaft. Uh, or the PTO here. So have the little rubber dampener right there. That'll go in between. Good. Nice. So uh, I actually purchased Kawasaki Ultra 260 uh, motor mounts for this because they're more of an upright style because the Yamaha has it at an angle and um, that's no good for what I'm trying to do. Just makes it a little more complicated. So let's see what these look like. Yeah, that will that will make that a little more a little more upright for the mounting surface. It's not gonna be perfect, it's likely gonna be more or less like this or like that, but it's better than being like that at a 45. So I'll get these installed and start mocking things up. So the new motor mounts are closer to being flat when mounted as compared to this. Here's the old ones that would put them at an angle. Actually get this close to what it's gonna look like. So the old ones would have had it like this. And the new one has it like that. So it's, it's not perfectly parallel to the bottom of the boat, but it's closer. Should make it a little bit easier to, to make motor mounts, so. I'm going to set this down and start figuring out what I actually need to do. So right off the bat, I can tell I already need to come up about three quarters of an inch. So I'll find the right set of shims that space this up and get it aligned and see what it looks like. All right, so I placed the engine in the boat and it turns out that these motor mounts are just at a slight angle. So I'm gonna have to use some of this L aluminum 
to uh, get the right angle. So I gotta cut this into four seven and a half inch sections. So get that done right now. So I have my four motor mounts now, and now I just need to get these located where they kind of need to be, about an, about an inch and a half up off of the stringer, and then set the motor down and verify its location. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I have the motor where it needs to be, and I've tested all the way around the circumference of this pump shaft adapter, that this space to that space is the same all the way throughout. So 330 seconds, and seems to be correct. For everything to fit exactly the way it needs to without interference, the motor is actually cocked off to like a small amount to the left, but that's fine. It's, uh, that won't affect oiling or anything, so. Uh, now I just gotta get these little tabs elevated, clamped on, tacked into place, do that for both front and back, and then lift the motor up, fully weld those, rest the motor on this side, and repeat for the other side. So I'll get that done now. Well, I just ran out of the metal hot glue, so I will have to get more wire before I can finish up my motor mounts. All right, so we have finished up what looks to be the motor mounts. So that's that's kind of gonna be the, uh, the end goal here, like that. They're at the right angle. They're set up to allow for a couple shims to space it to get the, the pump shaft alignment correct. And uh, we're gonna weld that up and get the motor out of the way, so. Here is that.
You need more heat? No. Because it was getting pretty hot over here. Then I weld the bottoms and then hit the top. Yep. All right, we're gonna finish this real quick. All right, the uh, the motor mounts are in, and the motor is on them. Now all I have to do is just transfer some some holes onto the the mounts, drill and tap, and that will be done. This video is getting a little bit long already, so I'm just gonna cut it short here. But the next one will focus around the water box getting installed here, the through hole fittings the battery tray, and I'm likely gonna start situating a, uh, a bulkhead here. Uh, this boat doesn't have near the amount of space as the, uh, the last boat I built did, because this motor is gigantic. The, um, on the Kawasaki's, they stop right here, and the supercharger is located off to the, uh, the side here. Whereas this, the supercharger is off to the front, and then you also have to have space for an air inlet. So they consume a whole lot more space. I think it's like seven inches total. So, and when you only have an 11 foot boat, real estate starts to get eaten up quick. So one thing to notice with the Sea-Doo base boat is the bulkhead is right there and it starts at the end of the windshield. Whereas this, it's gonna start about right there. So pretty big difference, not as much space, so. All right, well, uh, that'll conclude this one.